let's move on here. Uh, I want to go to James first, Mike. I uh, want you to. This is therapy session now. All right. But uh, Bench, let, let, let me ask you first. Manchester United Brighton. You tweeted something. Um, but I, no, no, no. yeah, that's funny. Well, I'm laughing one, at my own jokes. Yeah, yeah, no, that one was amazing. The well, the Lissandro Martinez one. No, uh, no, I was thinking more about you know, and I tweeted it as well later. There's there was so much talk about Manchester United, and clearly so. This is about Manchester United losing uh, Old Trafford. It's meant to be a new page, Eric Ten Hag. But Brighton, Hove Alden Football Club, is such an example of what a great you know, franchise you can be. You sell two key players in the summer, right, for a lot of money. One of them literally just like five minutes ago. And it doesn't matter. The system, the culture that Graham Potter and the club has created is amazing. I know that you feel the same about Brighton and, and how well they did in this game. I mean, look at, you know, we talk about it and it was, everyone was shouting it from the rooftops throughout this game and on the, the TV coverage, and rightly so, that they'd lost their their two best players, Yves Basuma and and Mark Kukurea. I mean, Kukurea will be a tough one to replace, but look at... And Ben White last season as well. Like, <laughs> yeah, crazy, but yeah. who is the who is the best player on the pitch the whole game, uh, with the possible exception of Danny Welbeck, which oh, is a Danny, wonderful yeah, story. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but Moise Caicedo, who's been in that mm. squad already, we've seen him perform. They've clearly been ready for the moment when Basuma would move. And Caicedo looks just as good. And yeah. that's, that's, that's how you run a club. And, you know... You, because this team has been together, gestating together so long, and yes, you take out some key parts, but you're not, you know, you're not taking out the engine. You're not, you, you know, you may be losing the nice rims you had, but you've got the vehicle. It can do really interesting things. And, you know, that first half when I think Jamie Carragher on Sky Sports was describing it as, you know, a formation like the way that Ajax won the Champions League with a back three that is genuinely one centre-back and two full-backs. Yeah. That's all, that all comes about because this team of, developed together they know each other they know what to, how to deal with pressure they knew you know how quickly did they go to a back four and then a back five when the pressure came after Dallow's goal you know this will sound like I'm trying to wind my cup and to an extent I am <laughs> but the reality is I don't think I don't think Manchester United should feel that surprised or disappointed by that result and frankly they lost to a team that are better than them at football at the moment yeah. like yeah. You know they they know what they're doing. United in a few months' time, I'm sure, will be better once Ten Hag gets yeah. gets at them. But you know they only look like a good football team when they resorted to Cristiano Ronaldo hero ball. Like they're so far to go, <laughs> so far. I want to give. I want to start positive and end in misery. Uh, so I'm going to start with Brighton. Brighton. Uh, I think you're completely correct, James. That Brighton was by far leaps and bounds better than Manchester United today. And and really, they weathered the early storm. You knew United was going to come out kicking and screaming and and throwing a lot of energy. The crowd expecting that early goal, and when it didn't come, Brighton started letting the ball do the work. And and Leandro Trossard, this guy is a future star in the Belgian national team, already scoring some nation league goals in some of the the big wins for Belgium late on before the Premier League season starting. He was playing out of position at left wing back mind you. And this guy was still able to thread the needle on the Danny Welbeck assist mm. for the first goal. I'm going to take you back to the end of a season. Manchester United going to Brighton, losing 4-0, getting absolutely humiliated. Goal scorers on the day, Pascal Gross, who looks like he could be in the top five for Ballon d'Or with some of the goals he finished today because we made him look that good. Um, Trossard getting on the board and Moises Caicedo. We didn't have an answer for him. Fred and Scott McTominay, like I said, I'm going to be professional. They were <laughs> well, crap. I think Roy Keane already said his they were crap. There's just no good for you. Know. Well, yeah, I mean, listen, Moses Caicedo, it's funny because he was the player that was not by United's board, decided not to be scouted any further. And it was Brighton who ended up picking him up, just an absolute talent. But there's a few things about the Manchester United performance today that was kind of shocking. Um, it's not the Ronaldo benching. Glazers were in attendance, fan protests, blah, blah, blah. Ten Hag was booed at halftime. It's just, it's, you know, the definition of insanity, right? Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different outcome. That, to me, te Ten Hag obviously was a, was a different outcome and a different way to approach it. But everything else, James Bench, tactically speaking, was exactly the same. It, it was very weird to see, actually. Yeah, I mean... 
I, I, I completely agree. It, like, and like you say, it's kind of therefore hard to know like what new things there are to say other than Scott McTominay was like lucky to be on the pitch. But frankly, yeah. I don't think United would have missed him. Mm. And that clearly, like, I think because of that Ronaldo introduction, it kind of made you think maybe this is how United players feel comfortable playing football is they don't, you know, and, and this isn't the right thing to do and it's not what Ten Hag should do, but they have clearly developed into a squad that is not entirely receptive early on. And we, we remember we're one game into a 38 game season, but this looked like a team that's not receptive to principle yet that will, that will, when the pressure is on, will fall back to hero ball to trusting whether it's Fernandez or Ronaldo or, you know, in the past Rashford and Sancho, trusting that someone will bail them out. You know, it was so easy. I thought for Brighton to weather the storm after, after Dallow's goal, because United didn't quite know how to deal with their dominance. You know, there were some crosses into the box. There were some set pieces, but there's just this, like we say, it's the same thing we say every time on every pod. There's just nothing built. There's no foundations to this team. It's a, you know, it's a castle built on. It's no stages. longer vibes as well. We used to say no, at least no vibes were around. Vibes. There's, there's no <laughs> vibes around. Mike, final point, buddy, on this game. Yeah, I, I, I just think uh, ahead to the next game because when these players go in and watch the tape, they're gonna they're gonna literally want to wear sunglasses because it's gonna be awful. It's gonna be shocking. It's like looking straight into the sun. Just gouge your eyeballs out. I, I want to. I think Christian Eriksen, where he ends up landing once this. United team gets settled in, that's going to be piquing my interest. I, I think for him to be more of a deep line playmaker, playing next to, if you're going to play Fred or McTominay, you can't play both against top 10 teams in the Premier League because they will get found out. You need someone who can connect front to back and back to front in transition. I thought there was a bit more settledness having Ronaldo in and having Erickson and Bruno Fernandez. I wonder who that defensive midfielder is going to be because you can't have both. And then on the flanks, uh, Marcus Rashford still looks like he's he's having the trauma of last season affecting him. It had the one goal that was lucky for him called offside, but he should score that. Offside or no offside, where the keeper comes off the line and makes a brilliant save. And yeah. then the second one, back post on his left foot, hits it out of the stadium, almost hitting the Salford City Flats. Um, <laughs> uh, still might be in the air traveling that way, but... He just looks so low on confidence. Jaden Sancho looking like he's he's getting bonuses for taking extra touches in the final third. Those two players are really frustrating on the day to day. I expect them to be better though next week.